So today we're going to be putting the uh, pedal box together uh, in the uh, 1977 MGB. This is a uh, left-hand side drive. Um, and uh, so um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the, you have the pedal box here. Um, uh, at the, at the uh, firewall side, you have the, uh, the clutch master cylinder. That goes in a little hole right here. You have uh, the, um, the brake switch. A little switch for the brakes. That goes into a little hole right there. And then uh, you'll run the wire out this little hole. And then the next thing that you do is you have the you have the pedals. These uh, um, this is the clutch pedal right here. It, it'll go through um, and be secured in a hole right here with a bolt. And then you have the um, the brake pedal. The brake pedal, you can see this one from the top, it'll go through the holes and right in, it'll be right in the pivot right in this area, right here. Um, and then the, the, the brake servo, this is the brake assist, it's a vacuum servo assist system. The, uh, the idea here, it's kind of like power brakes, um, and that goes in uh, through here, it gets connected in right here, and then the, uh, the brake master cylinder. Uh, um, Two, two pipes come off the back side here, and there's one right here on the bottom as well. Um, so um, it's pretty straightforward. It's just an assembly. You take it apart and put it back together again. Um, there's uh, a couple reasons why we replaced some of the parts. First off, this, uh, this servo right here. Um, so the thing about, here's the old servo. Uh, the thing about these is um, they have, this, I don't know if you can see right here, there's a, this is where it connects, um, and this goes into the intake manifold. So at the intake manifold, it draws vacuum pressure. Vacuum pressure, it's kind of a, so um, it, it draws vacuum. Um, and so this back side of, of this diaphragm is in a, in a vacuum. And then the front side uses atmospheric pressure to push the brakes when you put the brakes on. So you can see pushing those brakes in this direction right here is what helps to assist those brakes. So it's, it's the variance between the vacuum pressure from the intake manifold and the atmospheric pressure coming in from this side uh, that gives you the assist for the brakes. Um, I'm gonna take this one apart. Uh, I reason why I didn't wanna use this one, uh, first of all, I, I was like, oh, the rust really makes it suspect, right? Well, um, I didn't like the way the, uh, this was the old, the old connector that was connecting to the uh, intake manifold. I didn't like the way that this was wobbling around. It just seemed like it was going to be a vacuum leak, and I, I didn't want to affect the performance of the engine with uh, the the leakage that was happening on this. But um, when I took it apart, uh, you'll see I have a little video here I did with my uh, my bore scope. Um, The inside of this diaphragm has a lot of rust, and that really made me think, I really want to be able to trust it. I want to have good vacuum on the intake manifold, and I want to have good, good brakes. So you never want to have to not trust your brakes. <laughs> so that's why I decided to replace this. Um, I'll put the part numbers in the description so you can find them. Uh, I think we got these at uh, Abington Spares. Um, some things to look at when you're uh, when you're uh, prepping is uh, rust and wear. Um, if you can look on here, there's a bushing in here. Uh, these, these bushings are in good shape. I don't think you have to worry about that. Um, there's uh, where we decided to replace the, uh, uh, the clutch master and the clutch slave, or and the, and the brake master, um, because, I mean, it comes back down to uh, reliability again. If you wanna rely on this for your brakes? I don't think so. So um, that's why we decided to, uh, to replace the, uh, the brakes. Um, and while we're in there, one of the things I wanted to do was to replace every piece of rubber and every piece of copper. And you can see how this is cracking. I just know that if this is cracking, there's a water intrusion in there. 
And so this clutch is this uh, clutch master is going to be suspect as well. So out with the old and with the new. So, uh, like I said, it's pretty straightforward. It's just a case of assembly, uh, but there is a sequence. When you're looking at the way that things go, um, you can't put some things on, like you can't put the lid on, obviously, without putting all the other stuff on. Uh, so the first thing that has to go on is the, uh, the brake servo. The brake servo will go in on this side over here. It has a little spacer. And I'm gonna clean this up real nice. That little spacer goes on here, then the brake servo goes on there. That will give you the, uh, the, the connection point for the, uh, for the brake pedal. Uh, and so we'll put the brake pedal in there. The, when you're putting it in place, uh, after that, the next thing that goes in is the, is the, the clutch master and the, uh, the brake switch. Because uh, you know, once you start putting all uh, the brake pedals in there, you can't get in there and, and tighten stuff up. Um, and so the last thing that goes in is the clutch pedal. Um, and the trick with that one is <laughs> um, you, can put, you can put it all together with everything but the clutch pedal installed and, and then slide, the, slide it into the car. And then the clutch pedal has to come up from the bottom. Then you uh, slide the, the pivot in the, into the bearing and then connect it at the top. So uh, there's kind of a trick to it and there's a sequence. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. All right, so first little little catch of the day here. <laughs> you see, this is uh, this is where the clutch pedal has its little bolt goes in right there. But I don't know if you can see that's not round. So what that would do end up doing is when you put your when you put your foot on the clutch, you get a little bit of play, and I am not happy with that. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and. Put a, a little weld in there and redrill that hole so that it's a little closer to true. That way we don't get a, a wobble in the clutch. Um, so uh, be right back. <laughs> Gotta make a little adjustment. It's all about inspecting. Find these little problems before they become a big problem. So here's a little bit better look at what we're looking at. You can see this hole where the clutch uh, bolt goes in. No longer round it's kind of oblong and um i think it's from you know hammering the clutch for years and years and years it just keeps binging on it um and so um instead of putting a bead in there because i think you know putting a bead in there and then i'd have to get it back i don't know if i'd be able to keep it center so what i'm going to do instead is i'm going to put a um, a washer you see i've uh take, taken the paint off around the edge so i'm going to put a washer in the hole and um, screw this bolt in right in place. And, uh, and then I'll run a tackle weld around this washer. This washer will become the new hole basically. It'll be like a bushing. Um, and that way I can, I can get the positioning just right and the washer has no play. I mean, it's, it's gonna be nice and tight. And I think that'll be a really good solution. So on with the show. All right, so all nicely welded. You see I've got the, uh, the washer in there. I threw some paint on it to keep it from rusting. And you can see now, this bolt fits very nicely in there. Um, and so we won't have any problem with uh, punching the, the clutch constantly, creating any kind of racket. That's, that's a lot better fit. All right, so moving on. All right, this next step here is uh, need to put the the vacuum servo onto the um, onto the box. Um, reason why is these these 
screws, you won't be able to get access to them once you get all the other stuff in here. So it has to be the next thing that you're going to do. Uh, as it is, it's going to be really hard to get in there. So I think I'm just going to have to wrench those with a standard uh, box wrench. Um, so there's a couple ways you can do this wrong. The uh, Obviously you need to have the, the vacuum uh, pointing that direction. Um, and um, the master cylinder you see on here the brake master cylinder has screws that go horizontally like this so you, you won't be able to put it like this because then it'll be, it'll be wrong so just line it up so everything that, that goes with it matches pretty easy, easy peasy I think we have a Chinese part that does not quite fit right. And the holes don't line up quite right. So I'm gonna take a little file and make that a little different. It's always something. These uh, aftermarket parts. These holes, these these studs, the spacing on them is 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 off. It doesn't doesn't match up with the holes that are in here. So um, it, it, they're too close together. They'll fit one way, but they won't go completely closed. So I'm going to make these a little bit bigger holes so that they can slide in there a little bit better. There we go. That's how that goes. Okay. So now we just need to throw these, these little nuts on there. Hopefully. They don't give me too much trouble. Alright, so that's installed okay. I did end up having to use a, uh, a universal joint to get up in there because it's not like you can get past it with a box wrench right there, but using one of these really helped out. So it's just a standard universal joint with a 3 8 inch drive. Um, so anyway, that works really well. You need to get one of these because I don't see any other way of getting in there. Uh, if you don't already have one, if you're doing this job, that is how that's going to work. Just like that. And then you can get in there and get on those. They are all tight. You got them all in there. Bada bing, bada bang. All right, so let's get on to this next thing here. Okay, so let's put the brake pedal in. Got a bushing. Uh, now, the, you need to look at the way these bushings are compared. The, uh, the bearing shaft for the clutch is a bit longer than the bearing shaft for the for the brake. Make sure you put the right one in there. I'm going to put a little bit of lubrication in there. A little white lithium grease. That'll uh, help keep it lubricated and it'll also help to fend off a little bit of moisture if there's any kind of humidity or water that gathers up in there. All right, so this is the front of the car. This is the firewall. When you're situating the brake, make sure you put the pedal such that it, um, the, your foot will be going this direction. <laughs> make sure you set the pedal this direction. Um, all right, so inside here, you see the flange that mates up with the brake, right? So that has, it, it, there's a spring in here that's pushing this, right? You're going to need to compress that, so it's a little bit tricky. I 
but you should be able to grab it with the spring activated and just give it a twist and it will get in there. I don't know if you see how I did that. Just kind of get and then grab it in there with the, with the spring. Okay. So now we just need to move this down to fit into the little sleeve. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put this bolt in to hold the top end. That'll give us a pivot point so we can get this next little piece in, which is the little cotter pin. This little cotter pin. All right, so we're going to flip her over. Oops. I'm lucky my table has a slice in it right there. All right, the bolt is not longer side of the bolt fits on this side better. Just line them up. It goes right through. This is a uh, self-locking bolt. So it's got a little split there. All right. Once you get to that resistance, you have to pick up. These are 9 sixteenths. All right, so you don't want that too tight. It has a self-locking nut on there. Um, and you don't want to make it so the brakes get stuck or anything. All right, so let's flip this baby over and put that, that little key in there. So you can see right now, it, you can turn the brakes on, but it's not really connected. So we need to put this little pin in here with the cotter pin. So the thing about the cotter pin is you want to make sure that you put a washer and you put the cotter pin on so that the cotter pin doesn't interact with any moving parts. Um, so we're going to put this pin in and then we'll put a washer on and then the cotter pin goes on. So let's line it up. Where are you at? You're right there. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to put the cotter pin on this side because there's more room to play and the pin will fit just fine going down here. He said confidently. Where you at? Right there. There we go. Okay, got that little pin in there. You see that? You can see the hole right there. I'm gonna throw this washer on top. Like that. And then we'll put this cotter pin in place. Okay, got that cotter pin all bent in there. It's not going nowhere. All right, see I got brakes. And that is moving this in the right direction with the pedal face in the right direction. Everything's happy. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the brake sensor in. And that way we can check where it touches on this back piece to make sure that if we need to make adjustments, we can do that. All right, so this next step I was gonna go over is uh, uh, installing the um, brake light indicator switch. Um, you can see this little hole goes in. You can see the, the back of the brake, the, the brake, brake pedal shaft. Uh, and the idea is that when the brakers, the brakes are not depressed, then this is closed. And when the brakes open, then this thing is this is released. When it's depressed, it's it's a it's open circuit. And when you release it, it's a closed circuit. 
That way the brakes are on. It's okay, the brakes are on, the light goes on, everything's happy. Well, according to my ohm meter, the, the position of this switch makes no difference one way or the other. Uh, and just to verify that, in fact, my ohm reader's working, I'll just short it out. You can see, when you short it out, it works. And uh, so this switch is bad. All right, so just for giggles, uh, I took apart the switch and you can see um, there's a little push rod here that has a spring in it and these two posts get shorted by that little washer in the middle. So what's gonna, what's supposed to happen is when the brakes are not engaged, it's zero, it's, it's closed, the circuit is closed. And when you put the, um, I'm sorry, no, <laughs> when it's engaged, this button is, then it goes to zero to one. And then when you put the brakes on, it removes the, the pressure and it goes to zero, well, close to zero. So um, I think what the problem is, you can see there's a little corrosion up here. And um, when you look at the inside of the, the switch, there's some corrosion up in there, some water got in there and it just shorted it out. So it was always in an off position. It uh, never didn't make any difference when you push the button one way or the other. Um, this button, all it is, is just a, a little rod that pushes that and, um, and then that pushes that little plunger. So, I mean, it functions. I can turn it on and off. But the switch is bad, so I need to get a new one. All right, so the next step here, we're going to put the clutch pedal in. See, the clutch pedal has a little angle to it. Not quite as severe as the brake pedal, but you can't put both pedals in at once because the space here that's open is uh, is not big enough uh, because they, they spread out at the ends. <clears throat> so um, the trick here is um, to, to introduce it from, from underneath. So what I've done is I already put the, uh, uh, the clutch master in so that I can grab it with the pin <clears throat> um, halfway through. And that will hold it so that I can get the bolt in and slide all the, the anchors in. Now, the, the bushing configuration here, you can see, is a copper bushing, got the bearing that goes in there, and then a spacer. Uh, the spacer is there so that you can match up the, um, the pin right here with, with the pin right there. All right, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna slide this down from the bottom. And hopefully, I can lean this over. Get it to come up. Not a whole lot of room to work here. You can see the top of the clutch pedal here matching up with that pin. Go ahead and slide this in there. In you go. All right. So, in theory, you should now be able to slide this over and pull that, put that bolt in, and everything will be happy. I 
All right, so I have access to the bolt. Go line it up. Come back a little bit. There we go. Bob's your uncle. Let's tighten those up, put a cotter pin in there, and everything will be happy. Okay, washers in place. Slide this cotter pin in there. Quarter turn. All right, that's a nice bend. It'll do well. All right, so now we just have to tighten this bolt back here. Get a 9 16th branch on that. Alrighty, got some torque on that. Now all you do is bolt this thing in place and connect all the connectors. Next thing going in will be the uh, brake master cylinder. Alright, so I'm, <clears throat> while I'm under the dash here, I'm going to show you where these bolts go. Um, <clears throat> there's one right here and one right over there. And uh, you can see there's the, the back side of the uh, clutch master right there. And yes, to confirm, That's where the uh, brake switch will go when uh, I get that back. So once we get a new one, we'll put that in there and we'll be good. All right, so there's also a, a series of three bolts underneath the dash. Uh, three bolts under the dash. Boom, 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 right there. And then you can see these little tabs are where the springs go. I'm gonna go ahead and install those. It's kind of a two-hand job. I'll take a picture when I get done. All right, there we go. Uh, master uh, brake cylinder is installed. Kind of a bear getting those those tubes in. Uh, you'll also notice uh, how shiny those tubes are. I ran some sandpaper on them just just to polish them up. They had gotten quite oxidized over the years. Um, but uh, just to review, uh, installing the uh, pedal box um, and uh, the trick on that was the sequence at which you had to install the parts um, with the brake servo first, then the brake pedal, um, and then the, the clutch master cylinder, and then the clutch pedal. And the clutch pedal had to come in from underneath, uh, so it was kind of a trick. Uh, once you get that in, then the, then the brake master cylinder goes on and everything's fine. So. There you go. Uh, this is the uh, pedal box on a left driving the, the left side of a 1977 MGB Roadster. Whoops. I guess that's some good lubrication. Let's take the dirt off of it that just got on it from the garage floor. All right. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to put a little washer on here so that the cotter pin won't interfere with them. Well, of course, that's of course that's going to happen. Always good to have a magnet on a leash in case you look, drop a washer where you don't want to drop a washer. Okay, see if we can do this again. There we go. So there you can see I've got the pin lined up. Now before I put this cotter pin in, I'm going to put a little washer on it to keep the cotter pin from having any wear. You don't want the cotter pin to rub against any moving parts. So I'm going to put a little washer on there first. Here we go, cotter pin. Give this a quick turn. Give that a bend. There you go. One down, one to go. Now you can see we got brakes. Son of a bitch. <laughs> well, we have negative brakes. Obviously, the pedal's supposed to be the other way around. Well, let's uh, let's straighten that out. 